What's up you guys? Dr. Jacob Gooden here and in this video I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to show you my home gym. This is my sanctuary. It's like my home within our home. It's where I escape in the early mornings to get some time to myself and where I train. Training for me is kind of a pillar of my daily routine. It helps to anchor everything else. And so having this space to do it, it is a game changer. So this has definitely been a long-term project for me. It's continually evolving. It started off very small and it's been budget all the way. You'll see a lot of DIY stuff. I've hit up a lot of Black Friday sales. So I'm gonna keep this fairly brief. It's not supposed to be a flex of all the equipment that I have, but rather here is some inspiration of what you can do with a little and make a lot out of it. Now, if you see something that you think that is sweet and I wanna know how to build that, just let me know down in the comments and maybe I'll make a video about that particular item in the future. But for now, let's take the gym tour. Okay, now the first thing to show you is my barbell collection. These are right here, the straight barbells that we own and actually there's another training bar over there. This was my first ever bar. It was a Penlay Olympic weightlifting bar. I got it back, oh, I think in 2009, something like that. And this is really still my favorite bar. I really like the knurling probably because this is kind of what I learned to lift on when I was practicing Olympic weightlifting. The spin isn't great, it's a bushing bar. Uh, then this was my second barbell out of Lynx Barbell. And the knurling's a little bit softer. Uh, you can see that some of this uh, black oxide, I think that's what it's called, starting to wear off, but it spins really nicely. It was a um, probably one of the cheaper bearing bars you could buy, but I really love the spin. Uh, this actually, okay, I lied, this was my second barbell. This was my real first barbell. I picked it up when I was living in Tennessee. I bought it off a guy who was literally living out of an airport hangar bay. It was him and his like twin engine Cessna or something like that. Or maybe Cessnas don't have twin engines. I'm not sure. A very small airplane and him living in a hangar and I bought this from him along with two other rusty plates. I spray painted over some of the rust with some like engine metallic spray paint that I found randomly. And yeah, it works. This is my kid's bar, a nice little uh, two and a half kilo training bar that they learn on. They have a lot of fun with it. They like the colors. And of course, the easy bar. You can't go without an easy bar if you're trying to hit those biceps. Now they're mounted on this nice old piece of wood. This is actually, uh, this used to be a bleacher in the gym at Point Loma Nazarene University where I teach. Uh, they were changing out the bleachers and so I thought I'd grab a couple of them just for old time's sake. I thought they'd look good. So I mounted it up here and that's what hangs my barbells. We've got some other odds and ends. I built this guy. It doesn't look great, but it holds my dumbbells got wrist wraps and straps and then kettlebells and dumbbell odds and ends down below. Really, it's just kind of a catch-all shelf. And then finally, in this bucket, we've got just more straps, wraps, grip trainers, etc. All right, now over here is where I hang my bands. Uh, resistance bands are great when you're starting a home gym because they are very versatile. You can do a lot with them and they're fairly cheap. Uh, I've got my belt, uh, dip belts, chains, a little hip thrust pad, another pad. Yeah, just kind of other random stuff that I try to get off the floor and hang over here. Down here is my trap bar, which is just a beast. It weighs like 75 pounds. It's got extra long sleeves, so that's awesome. I, I actually use it mostly for loaded carries, farmer's walks, those types of things. Uh, occasionally I'll deadlift or do some sort of like deadlift jump with that. Okay, so here we have my trusty squat stands. These are TDS brand. I bought them again back in 2009, I think, maybe 2008, off of Amazon for about 100 bucks. And they're pretty janky, but they work. Now the reason I bought this brand is because A, I was on a budget and I was still in grad school, so I was on a student budget. Um, and B, at the Olympic training site where I was uh, learning and doing research, uh, this is what they used. And so I saw weightlifters every morning squatting 500, 600 pounds out of these bad boys. Now I've customized them with a sweet tape job. <laughs> uh, as you can see up here, just to protect the barbell, I just have some 
like carpet pieces underneath there, wrapped around with a bunch of duct tape uh, with the red, white, and blue electrical tape at the top. Now this is just so that the barbells don't continually grate up against this bare metal. So these, of course, raise up and I can squat out of them. And right now they're down to bench press. I've got the 15 pound training bar because my daughter Annie likes to squat with this bar and she's gonna train with me here in a little bit. But those are the squat stands. Now behind uh, are the jerk blocks. These jerk blocks I built with a couple of buddies while I was in grad school in Tennessee and I built them out of 100% free recycled wood. There was an apartment complex going up near the university where I was and they had this huge pile of free scrap lumber. Well, it didn't say free, but it was just a pile of scrap. And so I rolled up with a truck one day and I asked the foreman, hey, do you mind if we pick through this? We're, you know, we're students, we're poor students trying to start a gym. And he said, yeah, get a hard hat and uh, haul off as much as you want. So we filled a truck load full of lumber, which I mean, today lumber prices are through the roof. I wish I could do that again. Um, and this was the result. I looked at tons of plans online and this is what I settled on based on what I had available, based on the lengths of wood that I had available. Now they've held up to a lot. I've dropped uh, almost 250 on them from overhead, uh, practicing jerks, and they've really held up. I've, I had to modify them a couple times right out of the gates. But yeah, trial and error, and hey, they've held up for probably six or seven years now. They also double as weight storage. So I store all my bumper plates and change plates in there and then random uh, knickknacks on the inside. Now these bumper plates, I have two sets. One set is from Pendlay and if you guys remember back in the day, Pendlay Barbell was you know a great outfit, great company, great gym. I followed them. Um, unfortunately, they are no longer doing business, but I, I got a set of bumper plates from them and then also a set from Rogue later during a Black Friday sale. Now, they're just the all black plates, but I have um, electrical tape around them just to differentiate the colors because what, back when I was on Instagram, I didn't want people to think I was trying to, you know, stuff the barbell with big plates and make it look like I was lifting more. So I figured, why don't I color code them uh, so that people know what is on the bar. And so just so that for myself, uh, I could quickly grab a plate and I never would grab the wrong one. All right, two things I wanna show you here. The first is this uh, plyo box or pulling block. Basically, it's again, made out of that same scrap wood. It's super heavy and it's got um, a fiberboard top. I don't really like the fiberboard top. I wish it was just plywood, but hey, this is what I picked up for free from that construction site all those years ago and it's held up ever since. So it's just a bunch of scrap two by fours and then this plywood top. And now I, I also have these guys on either end to keep the, the uh, weights from rolling off. Like if I'm doing pulls from the blocks, this keeps the barbell from rolling off. Also, uh, I can stack multiple, I have four of these, uh, two of different heights. I can stack multiple boxes on top of each other and they're not gonna go anywhere because this sort of locks them into place um, in conjunction with this uh, bottom layer of two by fours. So these are great. I've been thinking recently about maybe redoing them, maybe making them a little bit smaller and lighter because they are uh, very heavy to carry around. Uh, but you know, we'll see, priorities. Uh, these have been great, they've really held up. Now underneath that is the lifting platform itself. It's just the typical uh, four by eight sheets of plywood. You can find uh, you know, lots of tutorials online about how to build those. So I use, I think it was 7 16 uh, OSB board, two layers and then two more layers and then a central layer with stall mats on either side. Now I have two different types of rubber on my platform. One type is some scrap rubber that I got from an installation of play flooring at my university, which play flooring is amazing. It's thicker, it's dual uh, material, so the top is puncture proof and the bottom like absorbs uh, and rebounds energy really well. So the play flooring is really great. That's this stuff. And then I also have some stall mats on the other side. Now the centerpiece is it should be a little bit thicker, but again, I was going cheap, and so the plywood doesn't actually match up with, with the rubber. There's a little bit of a lip there, and you know, some people can't abide by that. For me, it's like I wasn't gonna pay the extra 50 bucks to get a thicker sheet of plywood. So it's all good, maybe one day I will, but for now, I can lift on it, 
and it works just great. Okay, now this is the latest DIY project that I've completed, and it is a hip thruster as well as a Nordic machine. So you can put your back up here and feet down here and do barbell hip thrusts or banded hip thrusts, or wedge your feet under there and I put a little pad under the knees, and then you can do Nordic hamstring curls. When I came across this, I don't know if you can see it, but when I came across this cardboard tube, I thought, ha, huh, that would work perfectly for a backrest. So I've just got this cardboard tube and then a yoga mat literally stapled around it for uh, comfort. Okay, now the last piece I want to show you is this safety squat bar. This has been great, especially for a period of the last couple years. I, I was a bit injured, so I couldn't squat with a straight bar, um, and this was a lifesaver. I keep it back here. It's kind of a bear to move. Uh, you sort of have to zerch or squat it up onto the jerk blocks, but this keeps it kind of out of the way. You can see behind it this mess of stuff, like this huge pizza and, and bike jumps I built for the kids. This is kind of where we keep all their outside toys. I kind of wish that the garage gym could extend all the way, but you know, the kids get an eighth of the garage and I'll take, uh, <laughs> and I'll take three eighths of it. But yeah, so this is sort of where the garage gym ends and then the chaos of the kids' bikes and scooters and bike jumps takes over. You can see another one of those uh, pulling blocks or plyo, uh, plyo boxes that I built. And yeah, that's really the end of the garage gym tour. All right guys, thanks for checking out the garage gym with me. I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, the kids are awake and they're ready to work out. We do a daily workout or I don't know, every few days we work out together. So I've got to get to that. But until next time, stay strong, move well, and be good. I'll catch you guys on the next video. 73, 74, 75. Getting hard? Seven, seventy-eight, seventy-nine, seventy. Seventy. Good job.